Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the basics of SketchUp. Today we're going to take a look at the text tool. Let's hop right in. All right, so the text tool can be found on the main toolbar. It's this little, little call-out looking thing. It's a little A1 text box with an arrow coming off of it. It is, of course, also up under Tools. So it's down here called Text. And if we go to View, Tool Palettes on Mac, Toolbars on Windows, and turn on our large tool set, we will also find it right down here, right underneath Dimensions on that toolbar. The text tool is very simple. So the way it's going to work is it's going to ask me to pick something or someplace to put text. And, and there is, there's a difference between those two, something or someplace. So by something, I mean click on an entity that exists inside of SketchUp. So the only entity we have right now is Sumele here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Sumele's arm. I'm going to click once and release. If I move my cursor over and I see I, I'm pulling a text line off of Sumele. So the first point is to click where it's going to start. And if that point is on geometry, the second click is going to click where to actually put the text. So where's that leader line going to end? I'm going to just click it right here. So right now, by default, it's telling me the name of the thing I clicked on. So this is a component. The name of this com component is Sumele. So it's telling me Sumele. I can come in here and I can put additional information. Uh, this is text. Hitting enter is going to return you to the next line. New text. Once I'm actually ready to, to complete it, just click outside and then that text will stay there. So this is where people start to get a little bit maybe confused about how text works. So this looks great as I'm staring at it in the direction that I drew it. However, if I click my orbit tool and start to spin around, stuff can get a little bit confused and awkward. So that leader line is existing in real 3D space. As I looked at it, it was drawing it straight up like this. So as I spin this around, I'm going to see that leader line eventually just vanish depending on my orientation. So if I'm looking straight down that leader line, I can't see it, but it's going to get longer or shorter on my screen depending on how I twist and view that. My text is going to float relatively in the same space in 3D space, the same location in 3D space, and it will, if I switch to the other side, it will flip the text so the text doesn't ever cover up the actual, the text is never covered up by the leader line. So for this reason right here, a lot of people like to use this just sparingly, just for callouts, that kind of thing, and not putting a whole bunch of information on Because you imagine if I had 40 texts like this floating around, it could make navigating a little tricky. So I mentioned there's two ways to put in text. The other is to put it into open space. So if I click somewhere where there's nothing, it's just going to pop up. It's not going to ask me to put the leader line in. It's just going to put my text right in here. So I'm going to put this in here. This is some floating text. And I'm going to click out to close it. Now watch what happens here as I spin around. This is a little different because it stays at the exact same spot on the screen. So as I spin around, it's not going to move from this same screen location. So it's almost like just taking a dry erase marker and drawing right on your screen. So that means no matter what I do, if I come over here, uh, it's just going to stay right in that same spot. Um, this is nice for, you know, putting to-do notes. What do I have to do on this model? Uh, don't forget to do this one thing. This is kind of something you put on yourself or important data that the person who's looking at this model you're passing to has to know. This isn't specific to anything in the model. So as I start looking around, I don't want to put, I don't want I wouldn't want to put like, come over here and say, you know, Sumele, because as soon as I start moving around, that text is no longer by Sumele, so nobody's going to understand what that's supposed to mean. Um, erasing text, getting rid of text once I'm done with it, is just as simple as erasing anything else. I can just grab my eraser. Floating text, I can just drag right over. Same with this text. 
that symbol. I could also select and delete it. So if I undo that, just pick on this one and hit delete on my keyboard. Pretty simple. So you can change how text looks. So let's go ahead and get another, let's get a, a, a hold on. Get another text out there. Zoom melee, we'll just keep that on there. And then uh, I'll get another floating text. I'll put some right here. You don't have to hit enter. That is just apparently a thing I do. I didn't even realize I did that. Okay, so if I go up into um, my settings, so if I go to model info, one of the options here is text. So this right here, this text controls how my screen text, how the text I put in is going to look. Um, so this works very similar to the way dimensions worked. So if I want to change my screen text, um, I can say select all screen text. It's going to select all my screen text. You can see the difference between the screen text and the leader text. So here's my leader text. Here's my screen text. And when I have it selected, I can make a change. So I'm just going to do something simple. Let's just change our, our colors here real quick. Let's make it bright red. So we'll just come in here. I'll use my colored pencils, grab a red, and then say update selected text. So now if I come out here, I have to deselect it. It's currently uh, lit up blue because it's highlighted. It turned it to red. So likewise, I come in here and say select all my leader text and let's change that to, uh, how about a bright green? And then we can say update selected text. And now if we click out, it's ooh, very hard to read. Um, we can also change things like fonts. So if I come here, my, my red text, I can say select all, go to fonts. And then let's just leave it, I'll leave it the same font, but we'll make it really big and say update. Pretty simple. The last thing of course is on my leader lines. I can make some changes. I can change if I want to. There's a little tiny arrow here. I could make that uh, change how that works or change how that looks to a, an open arrow versus a close arrow versus a dot. Like I said, it's so small and it's a screen artifact so it doesn't really get bigger. Uh, it's not super easy to see. So I've never actually changed that. It's, it's kind of tiny. Um, the other option I have, of course, is my leader. Um, so let's go ahead and close some of these things. We have a couple other options down here for leader lines. Uh, if I have them all selected, I can change my open arrow to like a dot and update. And you can see it's really, it's, it's really tiny, so it's hard to see, but my arrow went away and now I got a little tiny dot on the surface. Change that to maybe a closed arrow, update again, and see, so got a little tiny arrow right there. It's very small, so I mean, I, I don't know that I've ever changed it before other than explaining what it is. The other thing that we can change is the leader type. So right now the default is push pin, and this is what I was looking at before. This tags this thing into 3D space, so as I look around, the leader line moves with my view. The other option is to change it to view based and hit update selected. Look how that changes. See that? It always stays the same as I spin around. It's always going to face me the exact same way. So it's never going to, to go away from this view. It's very useful, especially if you have some things that, again, you want to call attention to. This means I'm not going to accidentally get uh, you know, it's not going to disappear into the model or something like that because it's always going to lean out like this. So just an option, changing that leader type to view base can make your text a little bit easier to see. Well, I hope you guys like that and I hope you learned something. Like I said, text is something that it's not really intended for like final callouts. I'm not going to go in and put section callouts or or material callouts or anything like that. It's really intended to put uh, information to call attention to inside the model for the modeling process. So this is so something that you want to remember or the next person you're passing the model to should know. Um, if we get into more of that, you know, callouts for for documentation, that's something we would put onto layout later in the process. But text is a cool option and uh, has some neat choices in there as far as how you want to represent it on your screen. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. 
We create several videos, including one of these square ones every single week, and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. We like to know how we're doing, what you guys think, and really most of our content nowadays comes from comments from viewers like you. We like making videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.